got it. Great. So welcome everyone. Here we are with Sophia and Piali and um, a talk with um, the artists that are also part of the exhibition. We previously spoke with um, and had an opportunity to step into the studios with Adelaide, Ram, and um, oh. Maurice. Um, and then now we're kind of focusing and letting um, the open table to Piali. If you want to say that you're from Bardo or Baroda, India, and mm -hmm. Sophia, you're coming in from Guelph, Canada. So again, we're kind of like spreading our time zones across um, different planes. And I think we that causes like, that each month. Yeah. yeah. That if we were to convert, like, move the money to the other side, we were to move the whole things from the spell floors. That's the house. I think it's my dad. Dad, you need to mute. Do you want to text him? I love his cottage there. He has like a really nice, um, cottage there but um that's okay that's great well that's sweet that he's there too so um is that any other housekeeping we have an hour to kind of discuss works and i think both of you have prepared uh maybe a five ten minute presentation if you just want to roll and so i won't say anything else so there further in introduction but um sophia would you like to go first um sure i can start is that okay yeah okay um, I guess uh, I'll, I'll share the video, but I think to start, um, just to acknowledge with respect uh, that the land I'm living and working on uh, is part of the lands of the Atawankaran people, as well as being the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. Um, so in so-called Guelph, <laughs> in so-called Canada. Um, okay, so um, maybe I'll just play um, the video work that I have in the exhibition kind of in behind um, as I'm speaking. Um, get that started. Okay. okay. We tried this out, so I think the audio should be okay. Okay, so thank you to Carolee. Carly, um, Birgitta, and Mary Claire for inviting me to be a part of this exhibition and these conversations. Um, it's been really generative for me to think about the sculpture and installation work that I've been doing more recently uh, in a slightly different way through this lens of performance drawing. Uh, it's been such a pleasure to learn more about each of your practices and about Kiali Ghosh's practice and to engage with the work of Adelaide Damoa, Maurice Moore, and Ram Samocha, who spoke last week. Um, it's been interesting to see how performance drawing as this somewhat expansive and kind of slippery category or description of practice identifies an intersection between all of our different concerns and ways of working. For me, thinking more about it, um, performance and drawing were both things I came to very immediately from a pretty young age, both as a way to imagine something different and as a way to process and try to make sense of the world around me. Um, since starting my MFA last year at the University of Guelph, I've been focusing on sculpture and installation work while carrying forward um, the process and preoccupations of both performance and drawing and performance drawing. Um, so yeah, I've been thinking about um, how even as I'm working sculpturally, I'm making from a place of immediacy, urgency, um, there's this responsiveness, uh, an ephemerality or fragility, traces or imprints of the hand, of the body, um, creating an index of the body and working in a time-based way. Um, also engaging in a process of making because you don't know what it's going to be. So it's kind of this sense of surprise or process of unknowing um, through making. Even though I guess the work that's shown um, is a step removed, <laughs> but yeah, it's still, as with, I guess, the drawings, uh, it, has, it has this index kind of quality. Um, so I can say about this work, um, the billboard type structure in this work was made from two by fours, chicken wire, wooden dowels, staples, zip ties, scrap paper, grommets, and much of the plastic packaging that passed through my life during 
um, eight months or so of lockdown. Um, the plastic was painted with gesso and cut into strips to create a fringe. And then the, there's a photo on the wall, um, which is a photo I took four winters ago while living with my momor, my grandmother, in rural northwestern Ontario on Treaty 3 territory. The photo is fastened to the wall using a piece of plexiglass um, with the film <laughs> still on it and uh, screws and washers. And the elements of sound and movement in the work are being generated by a store-bought fan paired with a recording of my own voice uh, matching and harmonizing with the humming tone that the fan is making. So um, well, maybe you leave it there. You, you know, I'm, I was interested in, yeah, com sort of having a conversation. So that's a bit of background on my practice and, and this work. Yeah, no, thank you for like introducing it. And I guess the thing is also about the documentation and your body in it and how you kind of move around in this way about it. But yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thank you for yeah introducing it in that way. And Piali, would it be good now? Because I was thinking we could just like last time, maybe share in a conversation and our direct questions after both presentations and then kind of open it up. So if you don't mind presenting now, do you want to share your screen, Piali? Oh, yes. So uh, I'd prefer to, well, I'd prefer to uh, just uh, introduce uh, my drawing performance, what I have started uh, in 2014. So the, the whole concept of drawing performance started from the Indian Ocean. So I would prefer to just share a few words and a few short video clips from the Ocean Project. And I was fortunate to uh, have some opportunity to work on Indian Ocean after the, in 2014. After that, I had opportunity, I was invited to, uh, 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 by Australia Council in Townsville to, uh, do another performance on uh, Pacific Ocean uh, in Townsville. After that, uh, in 2018, I did the third, ocean, uh, third part of the ocean project in um, Ireland uh, on Atlantic Ocean. So uh, it's better to uh, just share a few glimpses of the three videos uh, or maybe two videos in this. So here are some words about the feelings uh, of my uh, performance drawing, how it started and how it just provoked me to work with the elements, especially uh, the water. Sorry.
I'm sorry, I'm just, it's a, it's a lengthy video, so I'm, I have to skip because I do not have, we do not have much time. So. Piali, we might need to move on with this clip because we'll run out of time. I'm sorry, Babito, I couldn't hear you. Uh, we might run out of time, so we probably better okay. hurry up with this clip. So, so it will be it will be good to just share only this video. Yeah. No, I just I said to hurry up onto the next clip. Well. Yeah. So uh, this video uh, is the documentation of the second performance on the oceans from the ocean cities. So it's, it, it was held in uh, Townsville Strand Ephemera Festival.
So uh, I think five minutes is over. So maybe we can just, uh, what should I do? Is there any uh, extra time to share some more? Or? Yeah, and maybe introduce uh, the work that's on the show now, that thing, the work that's in the exhibition. Maybe if there's a way to kind of bridge into the work that you're working at now, particularly even the that, one that you did in the live Instagram that, uh, performance. Yeah. Oh, that. Uh, I'm just going through uh, the quickly, very quickly. Uh, just yeah, to, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, great. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so uh, this work was done, uh, the, this project was uh, invited uh, in the uh, Sidai Bobinale in Russia. So the whole work uh, I did, uh, it, it took 10 days. So it was a durational performance uh, during 10 days. So, and on the final day, uh, the, all the audiences, I just uh, miss, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm blessed that uh, all these uh, audiences, uh, they just uh, help me to uh, display the work or, or just install the work on the beach of Volga River. So uh, it was very large work, so it was not, uh, it was a challenge to install the work on the, uh, on the beach. Well, sorry. So this work was actually uh, in 2019. Uh, I was uh, artist in residence at the Museum of Brisbane, and uh, they uh, commissioned the whole project uh, called uh, Naksh uh, Naksha uh, uh, and Untold Odyssey. Uh, so I did that work during my uh, residency program at the Museum of Brisbane. After that, uh, the work was uh, on uh, display on solo exhibition as a solo uh, display uh, in the museum for three months. And after that, at the end of the exhibition, uh, I was uh, invited to uh, perform. So the, the, uh, So it was a, a few steals uh, from the exhibition. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'd prefer to uh, share a few uh, words as I really love to work in the nature as well as uh, I simultaneously, I keep performing in the museum and uh, the gallery space as well. So whether it is physical drawing performance or just uh, presenting uh, the body movement as a line means uh, I do believe that uh, whether it is visible or not, but when body, body movement really very important in my practice in particular performance drawing. So when the body is moving from here to there, it leaves a mark, an invisible mark in the air, which is not visible, but still it makes difference. It, it makes difference in the air. When we are moving from one, one place to another place, it keep leaving mark, mark in the air, invisible mark. So, uh, well, I, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I, I thought that, um, uh, Ms. I, um, I would love to share uh, some previous performances. So the, the, uh, this video, I didn't, uh, it was not in my list <laughs> in today's talk. Uh, so yeah, that's all. Yeah. Thank you. No, that's, that's great. No, I, I think that's a nice way to even kind of see the visuals of the, the work that you're making before or how they tie together but then also i think it's um just nice to in it in it I, I guess how they sit together the works that we've just seen in terms of the line the the landscape material um and i think when just when you're saying about the invisible line this in, this um temporary line piali uh yeah one thing as i think of 
Sophie, Sophia's work with like the sound and like sound waves and how that is a drawing in space in so many other shapes and forms. And I think that's maybe, I don't know where we get to when we speak about performance and drawing and where, where the work sits in terms of different forms of documentation. But I'd like to kind of maybe start the conversation and open up to questions. Anyone else that wants to just raise their hand? Brigitte is looking at the chats in the side panel, if you wanna um, just kind of raise awareness and then someone can read it out loud at a time. And it looks like Mary Claire has her <laughs> arms waving in the side. She can't wait to get a question in. So over to you, Mary Claire. Thank you, Piali um, and uh, Sophia. Thank you so much. That was really exciting. Um, I, I was really entranced by how you both are working with your body in the land. Um, and in response, of, in response to the land and in the land. Piali, I just wanted to say, find somebody with a thermal camera. You will be astonished by actually what you leave when you're walking through space. It's glorious, it really is. We all leave a wake. We leave a wake of heat and um, skin cells and hair and everything, but you can, you can actually visualize it if you use a thermal camera, if you have somebody looking at you with a thermal camera, particularly if you run past, it's lovely. It really Thank is. Thank you so, so much. I, I would, um, that would that be exciting. And I think, I think you'd be very excited by that. I, I had a question about the materials you're using. What material did you make marks on that white, um, is it gauze or what is it? The, the, uh, the, the material that. Uh, well, you are. Uh, are you asking about the fabric or the? Yes. Yeah, the fabric. What? What? What uh, fabric well, was it? Oh yeah. Uh, well, it is kind of uh, not uh, original silk because uh, the real pure silk is very costly, and uh, so and as I love to perform in a very large scale. So it will be very expensive for uh, to you know. So I do uh, prefer to work on semi uh, semi transparent uh, translucent uh, kind of uh, material. Uh, I don't know what the actual meaning it is, but it is not uh, the silk. And okay. Kind of yeah. So do, does it matter Based to you? Polyester, it polyester threads so yeah does it matter to you um where the fabric comes from is it uh, is it local to where you're working or or um, or no I, I won't ask you that question just yeah so the uh the source of the fabric and the material of the fabric i'm wondering if that is is important to you and also the, the ink or paint or I'm not sure what it is that you're using to mark it. Ink. I'm wondering ink. if that is important, right? Uh, yes. Uh, I uh, not only ink, I do work with charcoal, the real charcoal, not, not the artificial, uh, not artificial, sorry. Uh, I, I mean to say not the art material. I do work on the wall with a real charcoal, yeah. the piece of charcoal. So, and here, uh, especially for this uh, ocean project, I, uh, I prefer to work with the uh, liquid ink. So as right. I'm working, uh, you know, just water, so liquid and the water, the liquid ink and the water, they are connected to each mm -hmm. other. And uh, the semi-transparent uh, fabric is very lightweight. In practical sense, of means I can I can carry a bulk of uh, huge, uh, you know, uh, mm, yeah. lots of fabric in in one of my, you know, in a tiny bag. So yeah. just yeah, just stuff in the bag and just carry. That That's is the wonderful. practical point of view. And uh, on the other hand, I really love the translucent uh, means uh, semi-transparent uh, the you know body of the work. So. Mm. Yeah, that's wonderful. Sophia, I also wanted to ask you, you talking about semi transparency. It, you, fascinatingly, you left the um, the film on the front of your photograph. So you have that emblem, that little triangular em emblem over and can you explain why? I mean, it's it, it's really interesting. But but why? Why did you choose to do that? 
Um, it's a good question. <laughs> I think um, I think there's something that I'm finding in yeah working more materially and more sculpturally is like a sense of maybe sort of conversation or um, yeah like sort of list, listening to what the materials want to do together and I think um, you know maybe informed by um, again performance work or this yeah sort of really body work from earlier in my practice like. I think there's, um, and working with kind of the aesthetics of, you know, rural Northwestern Ontario. Um, I think uh, my thesis advisor called it farm entropy aesthetic. Like, I feel like there's this um, balance that has to happen between um, like care, like I, I spend a lot of time and care, um, but then also a sense of um, things like entropy or like things kind of falling apart or I don't know. And I know the film isn't a falling apart, but it's, um, I don't know, it speaks to, I don't know, <laughs> where, where it's coming from or like that it's in process, right? Like it had film on both sides. So like the film has taken off one side, but not the other. So that sense of, um, again, working sculpturally, but having a sense of like uh, the materials being in movement, even if it's not in that specific installation, like over time, like all the components um, like I built the wooden structure with um, dowels, but without glue, so it can it can come apart and be reassembled. Um, and thinking that um, like all those fringes are kind of modular as well, so that things can be assembled. But this idea of like time based and kind of like a longer time scale that it could be um, reiterated or iterated differently at a different time. So I feel like um, yeah, the film still being on that plastic is maybe part of this like things, this feeling of things being transitional um, or like in between uh, or like, or, or having a sense of, of time that maybe later that other, that <laughs> film will come off. Yeah, but, the newness, I um, guess that's the thing too, because a lot mm -hmm. you were saying how you collect things, right? They're, they're back, they're kind of DIY. You yeah, all the prints that. is made out of like bread bags and apple bags and mostly yeah, like food. Print. That is the, yeah, yeah. you know, that are not so new. So they're almost a recycled material or they're mm -hmm. reused or repurposed. And I guess that film, I don't know. I guess I was also thinking about um, the weather for some reason. There's like with Piali's work and the, the, the temperature of like, you know, you get a mist off the sea or something that the mm -hmm. material kind of like allows that almost transparency, that like filter that kind of comes when you can't see or you can't touch something. So there's like this, particular space that it creates this other layer of you know not being able to kind of see the other side or something and that your transparency is like I'm a transparent piece of plastic that like has those like those recyclable labels on it or whatever the yeah, yeah. The, the motifs I guess and that's like you know I know in Piali you mentioned about your your like a decorative um, approach to some of the work you do too with pattern and and that's there's some repetition I guess it's the visual that calls up too um but yeah anybody else is there anything in there so i wonder if we could go back to mary claire's point about landscape mm -hmm. so Sophia, i was interested in your process of making the work that you know, i wonder if you could talk some more about your process of making the work you know to tie into why we why we're calling it performance and drawing and how you worked with the landscape and drawing and how that was all in your installation and then Piali I'll ask you afterwards about the landscape in your work yeah. but Sophia first yeah um it's a good question I mean in that work there's the photograph of of the landscape and um, I think the work I'm doing in the studio now this kind of sculptural work the the sort of aesthetic or um, yeah, I guess like the preoccupation <laughs> of that work is informed by like years that I was spending uh, living with my mom in that uh, in that rural landscape. So um, mm. the photo, I think, helps like anchor anchor it. That that's um, yeah, sort of where it's coming from. Um, yeah, the process of making. I feel like yeah, like as I mentioned before, there's kind of this like responsive responsiveness so that it started with like this uh, wanting to collect this material like noticing the weight of that this certain weight of plastic that was sort of passing through my life and starting to collect that and then um, 
like responding to it, seeing what things it could do. <laughs> and so ending up as arriving at this um, kind of fringe and then to make it more visible, the gesso on it. And then, I don't know, yeah, there's sort of, it just sort of, it felt like the making is always this like series of back and forth that I like choose a material and then see what it does and then and then that, that can leads I, into Can I just picture. jump in yeah. very quickly? <laughs> uh, it was interesting because the first thing you said was that when you were making outside, you were like, and you made a noise with your hands. Yeah. <laughs> sound is very important, it seems to you. Yeah, that, yeah. That wonderful, yeah. The wonderful work that you did were, were banging up and down a, a Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That, that, I wanted um, to know, do you, do you know Francis Alice's Seven Walks, where he takes a stick no. and walks along a, 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 a metal... Um, a metal fence and uh, Alvin Lucia's I'm sitting in a room. Yeah. Those two yeah. Sorry great. to butt in. I, but, no, those but are great I, references. I, yeah, those are great references. Yeah, and I guess maybe it's worth saying I, just to, as a last thought was like, I was thinking about that sort of drawing, you know, like doing that walk up the parkade and, and sort of collecting the sounds that I found there felt connected to this work in the exhibition um, because of that sort of collecting, right? Like the packaging um, was sort of something that was passing through my daily life and those sounds in the parkade, because that's where my vehicle is parked, you know, is sort of something that was a daily encounter as well and sort of like working from that to um, towards something maybe sort of poetic or yeah, a different kind of relationship. <laughs> So, so what about you, Piali, about landscape? You have put, uh, this theory of Reza Reka and uh, well, landscape. Yeah, uh, so for, for my drawing, drawing performance, uh, it is all about uh, receiving energy from the surroundings, from the elements. The very first one, uh, the very first uh, work from the ocean series, what I did uh, in uh, Indian Ocean, Arab, uh, Arabian Sea, my Rasadeka, the very first one, that was uh, mentioned in a write-up as well, that uh, I was sensing the current of the water through my skin. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is why I was being into the water how it provokes or how it stimulates my nerves or my brain. I was just trying to transfer the, that sense, I means how I was feeling through my skin, the, the current and velocity or speed of water uh, in Arabian Sea. I was just transferring the, uh, that sort of, I, I was releasing, better to say, I was releasing my energy through the lines, how I was sensing the water, water, water current. And the second part means of the second work, what I did in Townsville in Australia, uh, I was not in the water, but uh, there I was sensing the sound, uh, the sound of waves and how that, uh, how I was uh, feeling about the hearing the sound of the wave. I was just trying to be very truthful. I was just trying to uh, transfer that, that feelings into the lines, line drawing. So I was not conscious that, uh, or I didn't bother much about what <laughs> at the end, how it will look like or whether it will be, uh, uh, abstract landscape, or it will be means one can recognize that yes, I know this form. Mm. That doesn't actually matter to me when I do going through the drawing performance. It is all about the connection, how I am sensing the energy here in the surrounding or in the landscape, in the in the, in the water. So it is it is just a connection just a, making a bridge between myself uh, as a person with the nature. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's how you write about it too. I think I couldn't read all this script um, text that you had put up, but I guess that I remember reading 
how your feet are making lines and and I do you could we didn't have any sound with your video uh but yeah we can visualize the sound if that makes any sense or we can almost yeah. kind of imagine the wind and, and, and depending on then I think I'm going to take it back to documentation because there's um uh or photography in terms of how you capture maybe that experience or maybe how you record yeah. um the ideas of of how you're sensing it or how that kind of like where's the audience or what is it that you're um trying to kind of show in in the work I guess in in the in the work that we saw is it because it, it's conceptually kind of obviously depth with with the ideas of making lines in the water with your body and sensing it but then also who's filming you and how that instruction and what that negotiation is like in terms of where the camera sits um do you do much editing or how does that um maybe affect the work and how you make work uh, frankly speaking, I'm not very much interested to make it uh, just like a very uh, visually very well edited film. Rather, I really prefer the raw, raw footage and whatever happened, that's all. That is the part of the work. I don't want to just cut it off from the uh, means. It, it seems like means if I cut that, even uh, means when I was working, uh, 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 I was uh, performing uh, in Giant Spurs Bay in uh, Ireland. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, in the middle of performance, the bucket of uh, uh, ink that, that was absolutely, you know, drawn out with the water. And I was just, you know, following the, uh, you know, my bowl of, of ink. Mm -hmm. And that is also uh, means recorded in film. And I don't, when I will be, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, just exhibiting the work, uh, I don't prefer to just edit them or cut them off from the because that 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 reality, that time, right. that, that happening, also part of the work. So I don't want to make it uh, unnecessarily beautiful. No, what, whatever it is, it is, and that is the yeah, that is the. I love that. I kind of I'm gonna get to throw that <laughs> back over to you, Sophia, because only only because I know you also have work in theater and how the stage performance and how the audience is there's a barrier and things are rehearsed and things are uh, maybe repeated in a way that um, is not always just raw or it might be raw but it doesn't allow itself to be exposed or that vulnerability that maybe performing like lends itself to so I don't know if you could speak to to that uh, Sophia about the way you document or the way the work is seen in terms of for the audience? Um, yeah, I think um, from my side in terms of like documenting, yeah, the per performance work, I've always like thought about it as, um, or for photographs or video that it, it sort of like becomes a separate like kind of contingent work that there's like a process of translation that like um, a photograph of, um, you know, in this case, the structure or of um, uh, my body performing, like, like a straight on photograph might not, I don't always feel like that actually gets at the truth of what happened. And sometimes um, there's like, because photo photography or video is a different medium, like, I guess I've thought about it as like, through that medium, how do I speak to some of the things that the performance was about? Um, so, and, and like with any translation, you know, there's information that's lost and there's information that's gained. So um, yeah, uh, in like in the video of this work that was part of the exhibition, it was, yeah, trying to, um, I, I didn't feel, trying to translate sort of more of the feeling of what it might be be to be in that room and and move around the work and 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 kind of I think with a lot of this sculptural work I've been doing there's this kind of coming in and out of um like into details and back out to the big picture instead of trying to that that was people's interaction with it in physical space instead of wanting to translate that um, feeling through mm -hmm. video right and, and I think probably Piali you would maybe mention that with um when you are in the performance and you are experiencing it it's almost like you I don't know if it's 
true for everyone, but you almost, be, you become in the work where you kind of forget there's an outside, you forget about the landscape yeah. or the camera or what is happening. And then there's also you, yeah. this, this constant flux and flow between being in and out. And I think that's a nice relationship with the, with the idea yeah. of like the, the space and the, the work that you're both doing. But um, yeah, anyone else that want or questions up or anywhere else we want to go with it? I know there's questions of like, what drives your practice? We kind of kind of suggested some kind of things and things that you're working on now and how maybe performance drawing, um, it will, yeah, how, yeah, the umbrella of the term, I think we're all still kind of teasing out mm -hmm. to some extreme, but- um, I was really right. struck yeah Lee, the way you were describing this work like those drawings you were doing with the different bodies of water as kind of like um almost like uh creating a machine you know like or a, an instrument that can measure something um kind of like a scientific instrument but measuring something that uh science isn't necessarily bothering to pay attention to that that you're becoming kind of this this conduit or this instrument to for that energy you know or for that feeling yeah uh yeah uh, that's really nice uh it's related to brain science if we mm. just think about how our brain is working or receiving the energy mm. from the elements uh, so or from the nature so uh it is absolutely related to brain science and not only brain science our emotion how releasing the the our surrounding, how affecting our mood or emotion. That is the Rasha Rekha I, I was just, just uh, bah, bah, I'm just, uh, Bagita was asking about Rasha Rekha. So Rekha means line and Rasha is uh, just, a, it is our Indian, uh, very ancient theory, Rasha Rekha, mm -hmm. no, sorry, mm -hmm. not Rekha, Rasha, Rasha theory. So I keep working on that uh, since 2014 and still it is on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it makes me think of too the way you're talking about it. Yeah, in relation to brain science, kind of this um, question of like a nervous system, right? Like I think yes. all the performance that I've done before was this sense of like that your your mind is your in your body, <laughs> you know, that your your mind is yeah. your whole nervous system, and then yeah. stuff I've been reading the last couple of years about um, actually how um, your nervous system isn't just in your body. It's like you're saying all you're in environment that like between different humans we co-regulate like our nervous systems are connected or with animals and with like the environment that all these things Absolutely. are actually like wired into your nervous system um yeah I hadn't that's a cool way to think about that work as well yeah. like, like expanded like uh, making visible this like expanded connection of your nervous system yeah even uh, when I, I I do for perform then uh after certain time uh, brain uh, just start thinking like means i'm not individual from the world mm -hmm. means not as an artist i'm not uh, you know uh, just appearing uh, in front of audiences as an artist i become uh, means i become the part of the work so that is why i uh, means the all the costumes and everything you know just I visualize like that that body is moving in front of my eyes. So body is not mine, not your, nobody's. It is just part of the work. Mm -hmm. So thus I, how I just visual, visualize or imagine the particular frame of the work. So accordingly, I just uh, try to imagine the costume as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, could I ask you about, um, this came in the last work that you showed and in the performance you did on Instagram, this kind of extension of your body with fabric, yeah. like um, out yeah. from your head, yeah. like I was, yeah. I was curious what that. Yeah, um, <laughs> that is a piece of silk, mm -hmm. black color silk. And I made that uh, like a head crown. It is not crown, it is ju just extended part of head or just a just a different forms, just kind mm -hmm. of abstract form. Does yeah. that relate back, do you think, to like this kind of extended nervous system or like an extended yep. sense of Why your not? brain that yeah. it's building out? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. And is <laughs> that a mo motif that you've come back to? Because it was in the work you just showed in and in the Instagram performance. Is it a motif that you 
come back to often that sort of building up from your head yeah yeah means i was performing on the floor and later the extended part of the lines that they were uh, means i painted on the wall as well i was just throwing mm -hmm. color on the wall so it everything is connected means just a connection means floor is not itself a floor it, mm -hmm. it has support of wall so wall is itself not only wall that is a part of the floor so the thus means drawing i i have started from the floor and it, gradually it just uh, it, it just uh, started growing on the <laughs> wall <laughs> so yeah. it, even thus means i was just uh, uh, imagining myself as a as a uh, you know just a just a cube kind of uh, form on the floor myself as a form a cubic form so thus uh, means I just uh, made the head crown, elongated head crown, uh, just imagining myself, means I imagine myself as a cube, so. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> that's the thing, because it has this twirl and this um, yes. circular shape to it that does eventually circular go to a point. Shape. And then I guess maybe that's the thing, because is it painted or how do you get the silk to be so stiff and take shape? There must be a... Uh, I just stitched that. There oh, you stitched? Oh, it must be yeah, heavy. Yeah. Too. yeah. Right. I just stitched that. It's just hand stitching, <laughs> nothing fancy. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can I go back to something, um, Sophia, something that you were talking about, science, where you were suggesting kind of not exactly science, but things that aren't quite science, that are not quite art either, and that kind of thing. Um, there's a, a in England called Rupert Sheldrake, who I very much admire, who wrote a book called Seven Experiments That Can Change the World. And he talks about phenomenology and sixth sense and telepathy mm. and that kind of thing. So he takes these things very seriously, whereas most scientists poo-poo them and quite a lot of people ridicule him for doing so. But still he finds a lot of very interesting um, results come from being more aware in different ways to what you're doing the materials you're using to the place you're at and and other people or other creatures and beings i, I just thought you might both of you be interested in in that no and i'll just say also because that could link also with um like the indigenous cultures that you're working with in terms of land landscape and that yep. kind of relationship with the land in terms of it's a cultural identity in terms of how you um work with it and represent it and live in it and and be kind of you know health benefits you know in that kind of like healthy relationship I guess that is that you know what is science and this western idea of thinking about the landscape and and um science but yeah it makes me think of um I was just started reading um book yesterday and there was a, an excerpt from just looking it up it's Vandana Shiva has this um, text monocultures of the mind um, and sort of talking about I mean this book is about the rural and like you know rural knowledge knowledge is kind of like local knowledge and how through um, sort of western European imperialism the way that a specific local knowledge has been adopted as like kind of violently <laughs> implemented as a universal and part of like part of what um, how that happens is like denying that these local knowledge is local to all these different um, places. I mean, even within Europe, right? Um, sort of local rural knowledges are like just denied that they even are knowledge. So like, like to what you're um, speaking to Mary Claire that there are all these forms of knowledge that have even been denied the status of knowledge through this kind of like um, Western imperial system. And yeah, sort of pointing out, it was, anyway, I just was reading it last night. And I was like, oh, it's so great to put great. words to that, you know? Monoculture. Can you tell uh, who, who was the author again, Sophia? Can um, I can put I? it in the chat. It's Vandana. Oh, would you? That's, that's Vandana really helpful. Shiva, but... uh, Monocultures of the Mind. I'll just put that in the chat. Thank you. And um, 
after that, I was just wondering if we could return to Carolee's question, which was, what are you both working on now? Oh, <laughs> you want to go first, Carolee? <laughs> yes, yes, please. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, you are asking me, uh, should I? Okay. Would you like to go first? <laughs> yeah, you go first. <laughs> Sorry, I missed It was a polite, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, as uh, we are going through all <laughs> strange times, so we are absolutely locked up in our studio. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, since uh, last year, I have started as I cannot perform uh, in the environment, it means cannot work in the environment, uh, literally. So I'm just working in the studio, very much into, into the studio. And I keep working on the series uh, called Strangers in the Studio. Literally, there is no stranger in the studio, but it is just fantasy or just, again, it is feeling that I'm mm -hmm. surrounded by so many people being born and brought up in Calcutta, we are all the time in a huge population. Means we grow up seeing uh, lots and lots of blackheads. Mm. So lots of people. So, mm. and now it is absolutely different situation. I'm absolutely alone in a house. So I keep thinking or keep or love to think that I'm surrounded by so many people. <laughs> inside the studio or inside the room. So it's a kind of fantasy uh, mm -hmm. the, and imagining them and just, I keep making character uh, and keep drawing, mm -hmm. keep drawing uh, in a large format, in a small format, in every format. And maybe in near future, I want to perform with them. Means all this, with all this, yeah, all this character, what I'm <laughs> making now, I would love to be, imagine myself among them, means I'm another character <laughs> uh, beside them, yeah. So. Cool, well, it seems to come back to that, um, what we were talking about in terms of not being an individual, but being part of this like larger mm. whole. That's really lovely. Yeah, I was talking with a friend here yeah. last night too about, yeah, like I don't think we understand what this kind of long-term isolation um, mm. is doing to our nervous systems, right? Yep, exactly. Especially, yeah, like no, I don't know, there's like the touch aspect, but even um, we're, I'm doing my second year of my MFA now. And um, last year was all online and this year we're doing our classes in person and just how different it is to just be in a body, a body in space <laughs> together um, than to be on your own. So what are you working on now, Sophia? Um, my thesis, <laughs> uh, it seems to be the focus right now. Um, I'm still formulating, yeah, the direction of that. I think doing the, that Instagram live performance was a good push, like I'd been thinking about um, those sounds for a long time. And I think I'm interested in um, collecting more sounds um, that I've noticed in my kind of day-to-day -day, um, sphere that they have, um, I mean, yeah, some kind of resonance or um, they're sort of evocative in, in a way that seems to line up with um, sort of this photographs that I have um, from um, Northwestern Ontario and then this kind of sculptural work that I'm doing. So um, I'm making things, <laughs> more sculptural things. Uh, I, it feels like when I'm working, there's always like 18 different things that are kind of in process at once. So um, uh, I'm waiting to see what kind of emerges from that ecology um, and starts to speak for itself, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but I think sound, like like from, you know, like talking more with Carly, Carly about this work and then um, doing this performance too, it's kind of like emphasized to me, you know, that sound is maybe, yeah, and through this conversation today, um, not, uh, not to be over looked, I think is that kind of question of sound. And, and what you said, um, Piali, about um, leaving invisible marks in the air, like in the work I had on the exhibition with the air and the singing, like um, a kind of question of like breath and breath and thread. And I don't know, there's 
there's something about that really resonated for me that sort of like leaving invisible marks so um, thank you in the in the in the, <laughs> in the uh, um, uh, museum of brisbane performance what i'm uh, exhibiting in this exhibition the video of that so there there i used my own breathing i literally mm. recorded uh, the breathing of uh, half an hour Mm. So, and there, uh, so it was the background sound of the performance mm. um, there. So, yes, well, for me as well, sound is very important part of the work. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether it is natural sound or whether it is created sound, but yes, yeah, sound is sound, the frequency of sound. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's what's so nice about, um, I guess the language that both um, drawing and and sculpture kind of allow that kind of free flow, and of yeah. course, like it uh, lands in drawing as well. So this kind of where the breath is in the body and how it's this sculptural, but the moving and and stillness. I appreciate that very much. Um, is there anything else? I know we're at the seven o'clock chime, so maybe we could stop the recording and. Um, just say thank you for sharing the work and coming here tonight to have discussions. Uh, but if there's any other last questions from anyone, of course, um, I'm happy to share, but just in case you have to go, I, do, I don't want to run you over time, but just a thank you for sharing. And of course, being part of the exhibition and having these conversations, I think it's all been part of our, in the forefront of our minds and then kind of like making things happen is always, um, a good thing to do <laughs> and whatever happens like throughout it I guess that's the thing to to kind of see your work from the beginning just like you know glimpses of it and then being able to kind of you know with both of you performing on the Instagram live and then also having the work up and, and participating in the conversations then it just helps everyone kind of like I don't know it just feels like a really nice place to share and kind of work through whatever could be happening in in our own studios I guess and that was the kind of it with these strangers that I see now, I'll, every time I see one of your Instagram posts now, Piali, I'll be like, oh, there's another one of her friends. So <laughs> it's really sweet and nice to share. So it's been a real pleasure to work with you both and um, see and hear more about your work. That's it from me. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thank you. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say good night and I'll see you.